And today in John chapter 8, we're going to be looking at a message that I think highlights a father's love, not because it's Father's Day, but as I was going through this particular study, I realized that we really see a father's love in this passage. And hopefully as we conclude this, I'll make some points that will help us to see this. But John chapter 8 is one of those passages that gives us great insight into the compassionate, tender mercy of our Father. And so let's look together at John 8, verses 1 through 11. So let's begin reading here in John chapter 8, verse 1. I'll read to verse 11, and we'll get into our study, a study that really highlights a Father's love. Beginning at verse 1, John chapter 8, John writes, But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Now early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came to him, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned, but what do you say? This they said, testing him, that they might have something of which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear. So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Then those who heard it, being convicted by their conscience, went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even to the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. A father's love... A few years ago, I was talking to a friend of mine and his wife, and I said, you know, there are three women in the Bible that really speak to my heart. And, and uh, the wife said, really? And which women are those? I said, well, the woman at the well, the woman in Luke chapter 7 who was a sinner who washed the feet of Jesus with her tears, and the woman found in John chapter 8. And she started laughing and she said, oh, I thought you were going to talk about Deborah or Mary. You're talking about three of the nasty women in the Bible. And why do they appeal to you? (laughs) You know, I said, because they are models of the grace of God. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. We're going to see a woman who is, to me, one of of the, the women in Scripture that the Lord has taught me an awful lot about grace through. And that is the woman here that was caught in the very act of adultery. And so what we want to do today, what I want to do is, as we look at this passage, is highlight something about the love of the Father. Because that's what you see here, really, that is being modeled in Jesus Christ. It's the the love of God, what God is really like in a society that doesn't really know what God is like. We get a chance to see what God is like in the way that God handles this, the way that Jesus handles a situation that is a very delicate situation. So let's set the context first. Let's look at this and develop a background and then move into an application. And in order to do so, we need to know that and remember that the Bible, the New Testament, as well as the Old, was not written with, with uh, chapters and, and uh, numbers for the verses. They were basically just a single manuscript. And so chapter 8 begins in an awkward way. And I want you to notice that because it begins here in verse 1 by simply saying, but Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. And so that doesn't give to us a lot of un- understanding unless we tie it in with chapter 7, verse 53. And when you do that, you see the flow of this, what is taking place, because it says in chapter 7, verse 53, everyone went to his own house, but Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. So that gives us some insight into what is taking place here. We know that it is late. We know that evening has come. We know that the people that Jesus has been ministering to have begun to disperse. And John makes it very clear that everyone went to their own house and then highlights the fact that Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. So Jesus didn't have a house. He would go to the Mount of Olives. Here he is in the city of Jerusalem going to the Mount of Olives. And the Mount of Olives is a location just east of the city there, the city walls. And it has 
uh, a region there or an area there that we call, you know, the Garden of Gethsemane. And so it's more than likely that Jesus Christ would go out into this garden area called the Garden of Gethsemane and would spend the night there. And this garden that Jesus would spend the night in was a borrowed garden. It was a friend of his or a disciple of his that would lend him access to this private garden so that he could go there at night and so that he could sleep. Now, the reason he would do that is because he had no home of his own and therefore he would rely on the loving, generous concern of his friends. In Matthew, in chapter 8, for example, verses 19 and 20, Matthew records that a certain scribe came to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. And so, though he owned all things, yet he never demanded support. He actually would receive from those who would give to him. And that's because he wants people to give to him freely, giving to him and supporting him out of love. That's what Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, when he says, Let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or out of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And so those who cared for him would do so with a generous spirit out of love. And so this one who had a garden there in Gethsemane would open up this private garden to Jesus. And Jesus would go and he would use it and he would rest there at night. He used what was freely offered to him and he does to this day. He even uses a life that is freely offered to him. Because the Bible tells us in John 1, 11 and 12, he came unto his own, his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of God, even unto those who believe on his name. And so Jesus didn't demand support, but he did receive it from those who would offer it. And even so, that's what's taking place here. So while others are returning to the comfort of their homes, Jesus is walking now to a garden. Now, this kind of life gave him great understanding of human sorrow. When you read the book of Isaiah, for example, Isaiah chapter 53, verse 3, speaking of Messiah, Isaiah prophesied that Messiah would be despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. So the Lord Jesus Christ is acquainted with the things that we go through. And there he is in the city of Jerusalem, going outside of the city gates, going up into the eastern slope there in the Mount of Olives, finding the Garden of Gethsemane and entering in undoubtedly to rest there and spend the night. And so Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Verse 2, now early in the morning, he came again into the temple and all the people came to him and he sat down and taught them. And so when he begins here in verse 2 to tell us it's early in the morning, that means it's daybreak. Jesus enters into that temple. He begins to preach and teach the people. Now, why would he do that? Well, Jesus would do that because he's a good shepherd. He would do that because he had come to communicate to people the ways of God. And so he got up early in the morning. He would go into the temple. He would be seated there and people would come around him and would listen to him because he was there to communicate the ways of God to them. Jeremiah 315, God makes a promise to the nation and says, I will give you shepherds according to my heart who will feed you with knowledge and with understanding. 